The scripture for to, the scripture for today's message is Isaiah chapter 58 verses 6 and 9. Is this not the fast which I choose to loosen the bonds of wickedness, to undo the bands of the yoke, and to let the oppressed to go free and break every yoke? Is it not to divide your A bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into the house. And you see, when you see the naked to cover it and not to hide yourself from your own flesh, then your light will break out like the dawn and your recovery will speedily spring forth and your righteousness will go before you and the glory of the Lord will be your great guard. Then you will call and the Lord will answer you. You will cry and he will say, here I am. If I, if you remove the yoke, Uh, Emmanuel Choir and Nisho Kishore will gl- glorify God with their praise and the CF Pastor will deliver the message o- on prayer. Let me introduce today's flower f r a y e It's from the Overseas Branch Church. We give thanks and glory to Father God who has allowed us to experience uh, His great grace and the fiery power at this p r e s h church. We had the true witnesses to this uh, gospel of holiness. We expect uh, for the new year of m a m e n where we will be with the senior pastor, we will be united with the senior pastor and be strong and bold in carrying out our duties and become a big help to the m a m e n s ministry. With this uh, resolve, we give this flower offering. Dear brothers and sisters, for the last three weeks, we looked at the reasons for prayer and the kinds of prayer pleasing to God. On top of this, we will look at the areas to examine in order to offer powerful prayers under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Power, whether power, your prayer is powerless or powerful, Just because you raise your voice does not mean your prayer is powerful. Um, According to how pleasing your prayer is to Father God, I've explained about this. I also explained about the prayer of the Spirit. We have to make sure our prayer is powerful. We have to also offer the thick aroma. Even when we offer the same amount of time a prayer, we have to make sure our prayer prayer is piled up more. There are differences. There are also water. There are thick water or thin water. Thick flow of water or thin flow of water. Do you think it would be better to make ensure that your prayer is thick or thin? Yes, we have to be offering thick aroma of prayer. It's not about the time or amount of your prayer. Dear brothers and sisters, it's important to pray in order to enter into deeper spiritual levels to receive power. We must also accumulate all the more prayer. Only by getting rid of the flesh through prayer can a person enter into spirit When these kinds of people obey the word of God, power follows. Sometimes, it seems as though you prayed a lot to throw away flesh and enter into spirit, but you find yourself still not changed and become disappointed. Then, what is the problem? It's important to check whether you are praying with the spirit or with the soul. Let's look at the differences between praying with the Spirit and praying with the soul. If you pray with the soul, you are not filled with the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit cannot take control. Even if you try to pray, simply speaking, it's the prayer of your thoughts. It's, uh, it comes from your own fleshly thoughts. It's not about being with the Holy Spirit, but it's your own, it's your prayer coming from your thoughts. 
even if you try to pray, it becomes difficult as the mind remains blank and you end up forcing yourself to pray. When this happens, you can easily get infiltrated by idle thoughts and tiredness of fit- or fatigue follows. Some people say, I don't, some people say, I don't know what to pray, what to say in my prayer. I cannot think of anything, any word for my prayer. And when, when we pray, as for me, I mean, even when some people don't know what to say in prayer, they wonder what to say. If you are one with the Holy Spirit, they, the Holy Spirit just inspires their lips so they can speak fluently in your prayer. If you try to do things with your thoughts, we have to memorize things. And also you have to have much information about things. But prayer is not about thinking, but it's about the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Especially when you pray for others, you... you, The Holy Spirit inspires you to pray for others. Even if... uh, So, when you... when pastors or church workers um, help others to pray. Also, Mrs. Bong Nim Nim also prays for some people. But they just uh, read their mind and people are moved. People just, uh, they have their own secret and they never reveal it to others. But those who pray for them read their mind And they even say things they said in secret. So, the one who receives the prayer are moved. It's because those who assist the people's prayer, they are inspired by Holy Spirit, and and they are inspired by Holy Spirit and say things and with their mind. They talk about things they struggled in secret. And some people also say, when they, after they receive prayer, um, some people, after they receive prayer, they say, it's not, she doesn't know about me. at times they may think I'm not like that but she's praying about that for example the the pastor prays Father please help this daughter to rejoice always but the one who receives prayer may think I'm always joyful but why does she pray for me like that the one who who helped the prayer the pastor offer the exact prayer some people both say the pastor prayed for joy but she didn't realize why the pastor prayed about the joy and after I heard that but actually it turned out that the pastor offered the right prayer She may be joyful when in joyful occasions, but in the depth of our heart, there is a loneliness. Also, there is a grief. On, also, there is darkness. Also, when she compares them, herself to others, they, she sometimes feels depressed. That's why the pastor p r a y about joy, but she herself didn't realize why she, the pastor prayed for her like that. We should also pray in the depths of our heart. It's not possible on our own. We need the inspiration from the Holy Spirit. Then we can offer the prayer of the Spirit. Let's say you have ill feelings against others. You have to pray like, Father, I have to serve others, but I couldn't serve Him. I still have these ill feelings. In the same situation, you can offer different kinds of prayer. Because when you're inspired by the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit gives you a way to pray 
to change yourself and make peace with others and the Holy Spirit inspires your lips. We have to offer such prayer of the Spirit. But if you look at the reality, if we involve our thoughts, we end up offering the prayer, fleshly prayer, so we cannot change. And we don't know what to say in my prayer. So we feel that prayer time is long as a, as a result. When this happens, you can easily get infiltrated by idle thoughts and tiredness or fatigue follows. This leads to the inability to pray for long. Even as you pray, you just ramble and repeat words. And after praying, you end up not even remembering your prayer content. You just uh, babble in prayer and you have your thoughts somewhere else and you just uh, say things, speak gibberish. And you just... uh, if you pray, offer prayer of the soul you don't know what you said during your prayer but if you offer prayer of the spirit you can remember exa- not per- 100% exactly but you can say what you remember what you say if you also worship God in spirit and s- truth you remember what you heard during the sermon and you can summarize the sermon but if you don't worship in spirit and truth you even if after you listen to sermon for example we you have to check whether you can summarize your the sermon you've heard and you have to examine your attitude of worship and how you are listening to the sermons. You have to focus your mind on worshiping God and pain. And we have to worship with the, pray with the Holy Spirit. And then you can engrave the words in your heart and you can be reminded of the words you heard. And this is the work possible by the work of the Holy Spirit. But the prayer of the soul turns into a reluctant form of prayer rather than a prayer from the heart. This means that even if you pray, you won't receive the answers nor be able to discover yourself and change. Different from the prayer of the soul, the prayer of the Spirit is the prayer you offer with the fullness of the Holy Spirit. It's a prayer from the Spirit within and in accordance with the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Generally, speaking in tongues is referred to as praying in the Spirit because it's our Spirit praying for ourselves. When we speak in tongues, when you speak in tongues, even if you say things, but you're actually speaking what is necessary for your spirit, this is what happens when you speak in tongues. So physically, we may not know what we are saying when we speak in tongues, except that when the, with the people with the gift of the prophecy of uh, interpretation of the tongues can say what you're saying, but it, it doesn't matter even if you don't know what you're saying. But anyway, when you speak in tongues, you have to know that your prayer is asking for what your spirit needs the most. you actually you pray for your spiritual change for your sanctification that's what your spirit is asking for does this mean we have to always pray speaking tongues? no we have to so we have to speak in our own language like we have to know what we are saying so we have to spend most of our prayer time speaking with our own language then when we pray so we we know what we are saying with those and we are reminded of our daily life and pray for this and that and we have to pray with our sincerity and heart for the church some people may say because my spirit knows what we i need the most i have to speak in tongues even for when i pray for church prayer is But if you just, uh, we have to, you have to show your devotion and sincerity 
in, in your own language, like in Korean, we can offer up more sincerity. But, and we have to speak in tongues with the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Only then, our prayer of our speaking in tongues becomes effective. Some people may say, because I'm tired, uh, I just want to speak in tongues with our, with our thoughts somewhere else. We cannot call that spiritual prayer. You, you have to also know that speaking in tongues is different from prayer of the Spirit. Speaking in tongues is about the uh, Anyway, it has, there are different meanings. No matter how much you speak in tongues, if you speak in tongues with various thoughts popping into your mind, then this also becomes a prayer of the soul. As I explained, you have to pray, we have to enter into the fullness of the Spirit, and then speak in tongues. Then you can uh, offer up a thick spiritual prayer. And, and you can go into deeper levels like You can, you, your prayer can reach the deep. You have to pray, but let's say you are, you know, there are wood, and even if if you just put fire on it, the fire is put out. When you put out, when you try to put a fire on the wood, you have to. work a lot, then after all, it will blaze. The same goes for a prayer. You have to pray for your repentance, we pray for your sanctification, and then you pray for your individual subject, individual subjects, and then with the fullness of the Spirit, you have to speak in tongues. Then you can offer spiritually deep prayer. I'm sorry, we have to Uh, talk about fasting, but I, I don't think uh, we. I think I have to cut short. I don't think I can talk about fasting uh, today. So, because prayer is important, I'm explaining a, a lot about prayer so that you can easily understand and you can know about the deep spiritual things. When the shepherd explained about prayer, it was about back in early days of the. 2000, so you haven't heard that message on prayer for a long time. So that's why I'm adding a lot to the message. So we have to know when to pray speaking in tongues. Some people just uh, start speaking in tongues as they start praying. You have to... We see... you have to first receive the fullness of the Spirit and then you have to speak in tongues. Only then you can offer spiritually deep prayer. I'm talking about the prayer of the Spirit. When you offer a prayer of the Spirit under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, words just come to mind without you having to manually think them up. There's no obstruction to the prayer flow. You can also discover hidden characteristics of yourself or aspects from deep within the heart. Sometimes you may even pray for areas you haven't thought of through the guidance of the Holy Spirit. I also explained that you have to meditate. Meditating is about you have to research, doing a research about yourself. You have to pray like you are doing research about yourself. You have to, in order to change yourself, you have to pray that way. You have to meditate or ponder over yourself. When you say things, the words, there are many forms of evil in the depth of your heart. You say things, you say nice words, but if you have resentment against others, such things, you have to discover them. which is that in the depth of your heart, and you have to discover them, hold them in your prayer, and, and so in your everyday life, you have to meditate on yourself, ponder over yourself. But as for me, in, in the process of my change, I, as I prayed, 
offered a deep prayer, I could uh, ponder over myself. For example, when I had some ill feelings against others, I hold on to that in prayer. I say like, Father, please help me not to have this feeling. If you offer prayer, spiritual prayer, the Holy Spirit reminds you of everything you need to know about yourself. And when you pray, the Holy Spirit is analyzing your heart and the Holy Spirit does the work and even if you pray in Korean, the Holy Spirit I mean you say, Father because I have this inner feeling, I spoke that word to Him and uh, the Holy Spirit gives you that feeling, the Holy Spirit reminds you of the what happened and you say that and with His inspiration Even if someone does not rebuke you, even if someone does not admonish you, the Holy Spirit gives you an awakening. This is exact. We have to offer this kind of prayer. Once you offer this prayer, when when you discover yourself, you cannot stay still. After you pray with the Holy Spirit, you just... um, And you remember that again and again. And you... because you offer the spiritually deep prayer and then the next day and you think about the awakenings the Holy Spirit gave you and you keep reminding yourself of the awakenings during the day and during the Daniel prayer meeting and you pray and pray again with the inspiration and feelings from the Holy Spirit then you can also deeply analyze yourself let's say there are resources natural resources deep in the ground you have to dug deep the same way you have to pray with the Holy Spirit then you can discover what's in the depth of your heart you have to discipline yourself like that only then can you achieve sanctification but you shouldn't just uh, do things on the surface you shouldn't just uh, scratch the surface you have to root things out After you change to an extent, you just, um, after some time, you again cease to pray, and you stop praying. Once you discover the forms of people, you have to pray on to them for days, for months, for years. Then you you don't just scratch the surface, but you you dug deep. You go into the depth of your heart and, and see what's in the depth of your heart, and You have only after we discover our sinful natures can we become sanctified. Let's compare this to flower arrangement. I mean, some people just uh, scratch the surface in praying, and then. And such, so they have sinful natures keep coming up. If you don't root things out, you cannot remove the sinful natures because they are deep rooted. They grow back because they have strong life. Let's compare this to weeds because they are deeply rooted and they are strong. They are not easily rooted out. Even if we cut the cut it above the ground, they grow back. The simple natures are like that. Those who have lived over 50 years, because we are the descendants of Adam, throughout the human cultivation, the simple natures have uh, been have been inherited and. Basically, we have uh, such strong, we have to know that we have such ugly, dark, sinful natures deeply rooted in ourselves. And in order to discover them, just having an awakening once or twice is not enough. We have to offer spiritually deep prayer. Then the Holy Spirit allows us to look at our depths of our heart and we also We also, the Holy Spirit 
makes us realize about our family members and we have an awakening and we can truly meditate on our self. Such prayer, these are prayers not from the fleshly thoughts, but they are offered with you and the Holy Spirit being one. The Holy Spirit helps you understand the unknown and sometimes prepares you for what is to come through prayer as He knows everything. The Holy Spirit has such great power. We have to feel and know that well. The next day is, uh, the next week is the Wheat Sunday. We, I will talk about the help of the Holy Spirit. We have to pray with the help from the Holy Spirit. Then we can quickly achieve sanctification. But in order to do, offer such prayer, as I told you in the last session, we have to pray, crying out in prayer. Only then can we reach that level. We shouldn't just pray half-heartedly. This uh, is not praying with the Holy Spirit. This is not spiritual prayer. We have to make sure we are offering the spiritual prayer. To offer such a spiritual prayer, a prayer of the Spirit, we are to make sh- to keep the The kind, we have to offer the kinds of prayer that the Father God is pleased with. Then we can offer the prayer with the Spirit. The Holy Spirit helps you Uh, how happy and spirit-filled would you be if you become one with the Holy Spirit in prayer? The Holy Spirit knows God's heart and His will extremely well. By praying with one accord with the Holy Spirit, we, we can offer prayers pleasing to God. Joy and fullness of the Holy Spirit inevitably appears to those who pray, and answers will quickly transpire forever your prayer request. For, The Bible says this is the confidence we have before Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. When we become one with the Holy Spirit and ask according to His will, we will be blessed with the answers to everything requested. As you become one with the Holy Spirit, you will gradually go beyond the level of being filled with the Holy Spirit and reach the level of having the fullness and inspiration of the Holy Spirit. The fullness of the Holy Spirit, the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, And the baptism of the Father of the Holy Spirit, they have, each have different meaning. The deeper level than the fullness of the Holy Spirit is the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. I also hope that you reach that level. This means praying amidst the full control of the Holy Spirit. Your body feels as if you are floating in the air or on the cloud, and the Holy Spirit completely inspires your lips. When this happens, most of you um, get to pray with uh, uh, speaking tongues. When we, when we, when we reach that, let's reach, reach that state, we just uh, speak in tongues. Then you are, you you pray without. When you pray with your spirit. Uh, you have no thoughts. As for me, when I pray on the pulpit during the dinner prayer meeting, I can speak fluently. Don't don't tell me that I'm bragging. I'm not using, involving any of my thoughts. If I, you know, if I, for example, if I have worries or if I involve fleshly thoughts, my prayer becomes like, is not fluent. But when this happens, I try to to get it together. But but this happened, this has happened when there were times that I had some worries or concerns, so I couldn't not have the fullness of the Spirit. So I realized that I have to put it together and I have to focus my mind. I have to pray without idle thoughts and I have to focus totally on prayer. Then I can offer spiritual prayer. Then when I reach that state, I have no thoughts whatsoever. I can, that way I can offer spiritual prayer and the Holy Spirit just inspires me to say things and, and things go smoothly according to the prayer. 
we have to pray with the inspiration of the Holy Spirit with not involving fleshly thoughts I also have the good memories of me praying in my childhood I remember uh, offering v o w prayer back in my elementary school days it was like when I was 9 years old this church was founded when I was 8 and when I prayed I received uh, I learned how to pray in tongues and, and when I was 9 years old I offered a v o w prayer I offered two hours for two hours I made a vow prayer and I, when I prayed that way I could see visions when I prayed alone I saw visions and when I was praying with the fullness people just uh, when I when I pray on bended knees I was like it was like I was uh, leaping my knees were like uh, because I was so filled with the Holy Spirit I prayed that way when I prayed that way I could offer such deep spiritual prayer even adults so even adult members knew when I tried to find out when I prayed in the sanctuary so they came and tried to pray with me in the sanctuary so I had such uh, memories of me praying back in the day, but now, nowadays I also, I, even, though, even though I'm praying, I remember offering such deep spiritual prayer. You are like in the zone and you're so happy. And even if you eat nothing, you are full, and you feel like it's a uh, you are in heaven, and you are feel like you are before the throne of God. You pray with that inspiration. Then Father God would look at you so lovingly, and He would allow you to accomplish. Even nowadays, I'm I'm, I'm longing to offer that kind of prayer, which was the kind which was offered back in my. childhood uh, we have pastors uh, sitting behind me and he was, uh, he was here back in the early days of the church I think you also have that experience he has that experience such deep spiritual prayer you, it, once you go into that state you can change yourself and, and you can receive strength from above when you when praying with the fullness and the inspiration of the Holy Spirit you can swiftly receive answers and burn sin from the root with the fire of the Holy Spirit this quickens entering the Spirit uh, when I was uh, praying back in my childhood uh, people just uh, sat together and prayed and we church members used to pray for our evangelism evangelism and also I have the individual prayer subject I I didn't I asked Father God to help me remove the resentment back in my childhood when I came home there was no one at home and but I feel I did I was not happy so I asked Father God to help me remove such feelings and I also prayed about and I also when I also said Father God please help me cast off hatred actually uh, I was not hating someone but but I was having some uh, conflicts with uh, uh, people and and I said Father I have uh, murder in my heart because So when I look back on my childhood, it was uh, lovable. With the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, you can pray that way. Also, when you pray with the fullness of the inspiration of the Holy Spirit like that, you also to receive power, you are to accumulate this kind of prayer. 
As for prayer to receive power, God determines the times. Of course, a person who desires to receive power needs to pray hard to receive power on his part. But God strongly inspires those vessels who are prepared to fervently pray for power. They will receive guidance to increase the amount of prayer and intensively pray to receive power. When God gives direct guidance and we pray uh, and we obey, God gives grace and strength from above. It allows us to pray with the fullness and inspiration of the Holy Spirit. As these kinds of prayers accumulate, God's power follows. But just because you keep praying to receive power doesn't mean you will receive it no matter what. It's the same when people pray to receive power of their own accord without the guidance of the Spirit. God gives guidance to those whose hearts have been cultivated in spirit to an extent. Once they obey and pray accordingly, power follows. Whether it's to receive power or to prepare a vessel to receive power, it's uh, important for people who receive direct guidance to always offer prayers of the Spirit in the fullness and inspiration of the Holy Spirit. After listening to the sermons on praying with the Spirit, is there anyone disappointed or discouraged? It's because you realize you've been praying with the soul despite having prayed for so many years, but I pray that you won't be discouraged. Despite having prayed with the soul and in your own thoughts at first, you are to earnestly cry out in prayer and pray according to God's will. Then God recognizes your deed and provides grace and and the ability to pray fervently. If you reflect on your own prayer form, correct any wrong habits, and make an effort to pray with the heart, you will be able to change. If you make the effort, you will be able to experience spiritual prayer. If you try to pray more deeply, you will be able to keep the line of communication with God. As for me, I, I, I told you that I long to offer the kind of prayer that I offered in my back childhood. I also, you also have the, you also have the, those times when you pray, offered spiritual prayer. When you were filled with the Spirit, when you had the first love for God, you had offered this kind of prayer, offered this kind of faithfulness. But if you find yourself not doing that, you have to make a goal of doing that. You should not give up. You have to, You have to try to recover that fullness, and and once you rec- have recovered that uh, level, there you have to rise above that. If you haven't tasted the, the spiritual prayer, you have to taste it. Only after you taste it, you know what it is. Even if that joy, that happiness, I urge you to experience it. You have to feel that, and Father God. is eager to give you that experience. You know, from tomorrow, we have the uh, prayer meeting. Father God is eager to give you that experience and that feeling, and you have to have that through the prayer meeting. You have to pray with all your sincerity. Focus yourself in t e r n a l prayer. And I just explained uh, what kind of prayer is or pleasing to God. I also talked about the prayer life of the Miss Bong Nim Lee because she has a focus on prayer. She also maintains her body condition. She focuses all her time in, on prayer so that she doesn't have idle thoughts during prayer. So during the bow prayer meeting period, I hope that you lead a life that is pleasing to God so that you can experience the spiritual prayer the taste of the fullness and inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Then, prayer won't feel difficult. You will become easily moved by the Holy Spirit through praise and prayer and be able to always pray with the Spirit. You should hold on to that rope of prayer. Let's say, you have to keep that joy and the fullness. If you find yourself having prayed with idle thoughts, you have to get it together and pray, try to pray, figure out the reason, and you have to also change your everyday life. You have to lead a life that is pleasing to God. Then 
then how should coming this spirit be difficult and what kind of answers would you not be able to receive? But after you just live as the the way you please and then you try to pray and you are filled with idle thoughts and you think about all kinds of things that, that happen in your life and you cannot focus on prayer. But if you try to live uh, if you live a life of self-restraint if you if you if you spend your then Father God would give you grace if Father God with uh, I hope then you check whether you live this kind of life and you have to focus your life on prayer if you If you continue to pray, even if you don't receive an answer immediately or don't know how to pray with the Spirit, God listens to you and guides you to pray with the Spirit. Step by step, you have to check your own prayer life. Even if you don't know how to offer prayer of the Spirit, even though you don't offer the spiritual prayer, that doesn't mean you have to stop praying. The important thing is you have to pray habitually, m- develop a habit of prayer. As I told you in the last session, you have to try to, you have to struggle to offer the kind of prayer that are pleasing to God, like kneeling down, bending, praying on bended knees. You have to show such devotion and efforts. You have to get it together and try to shatter your. S- fleshy thoughts, if you find yourself with idle thoughts, you have to try to remove them and go back to your prayer. Then if the Holy Spirit will give you strength, then God can, then God can discern and answer even your past prayers of the soul. So it's important to never be discouraged, but always make the effort to pray. This gives you kind of hope, right? You may think, I've prayed a lot with the soul for many, many years, but does this mean that my prayers are all useless? No. Even if you have piled up the prayer of the soul, Father God, of course, it's not a thick or remote prayer, but once you become a person who Father God will repay you, with answers. After all, I pray in the name of the Lord that many people will have the inspiration and fullness of the Holy Spirit, pray in unity with the Holy Spirit, and become blessed believers who glorify God with great answers. I th- I ex- so I explained about the prayer of the Spirit and prayer of the soul. I also have a lot of explanation, explanation to add. So, when I preach in the next session, I will cover them and share them. You want to pray with the Spirit, right? You can do it. It's not that the Holy Spirit allows some people to pray with the Spirit and allows others to pray with the soul. Also, you have to show earnestness, eagerness, and your efforts. If you find yourself with idle thoughts, you have to Try to control your thoughts and you have to go back to your prayer and focus your heart on prayer and try to pray from the heart and you have to examine yourself moment by moment. Also, you have to check this in your prayer, uh, praise time. When you sing praises, when you, if you have your thoughts somewhere else, you know, prayer is also the prayer with rhythm. So you have to also check whether how you sing praise with all your heart. You have to check whether you sang praises without idle thoughts. Then you can also same same way check your prayer in the during the Sunday morning service. Uh, we sang two songs. Do you remember what song we sang during this uh, prayer worship service? See what kind of uh, how you are worshiping God. You can check yourself that way. Some people say, I want to come into spirit, but why can't I? But you have to check your attitude of worship. You have to know how powerful the spiritual prayer is. So I hope that you receive, offer spiritual prayer and receive answers and blessings and you over. Let's return to this message and prayer. Amen.
Let me pray for the sick. Lay your hands on your sick parts. If you are not sick, lay your hands on your chest and with your heart's desire. Father God of goodness, thank you. Uh, please lay your hands on all, all, the, all your members. All my members in and out of Korea and GCN viewers, please work for them and lay your hands on them and heal them and answer them. Please lay your hands on from head to toe. All their serves and their tissues and cells, please lay your hands on them. Please work with your power. Scorch their germs and viruses. Strengthen them. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. I command. All things be cleansed and be perfect and whole and strengthened so that please rejuvenate the, our elderly. Let them live a healthy life. Let them testify that they are living, enjoying good health. Please protect our minds and thoughts of the students. Let them not make friends with the world. Let them, let all our church members, uh, please protect our church members' homes and business workplaces. Let them Please help them evangelize their families. And most of all, we have a um, volunteer meeting starting from tomorrow. Please let them offer spiritually deep prayers. Please, thank you. May you glorify through all our mommy members. Please and p- protect our church members, all branch and associate church members. Thank you. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.